Welcome to another body language video. In the previous video on Christine Lagarde, we focused on eye movement. Now we're going to look at uh, eyelid movement, or blink rate, as, it, as it's usually called. And the person we're looking at is Mark Carney, the present govern, governor of the Bank of England. Once again, this isn't about targeting a person or finding their faults. It's about looking at one individual and looking at any non-verbal patterns that come up or any interesting incidents that come up. Now, the spontaneous blink rate varies considerably between humans. Uh, one stat I got from the internet is that a human blinks approximately 20,000 times a day. That's debatable, um, comparing different humans, but I would argue that every single one of those 20,000 hypothetical blinks is unique. You don't, or I don't, blink the same way every single time. It depends on what I'm thinking about. The speed is different, the intensity is different, the time lapse between the blinks is different. Your blink rate when having a conversation, staring at a movie screen, listening to music, just resting, will all be different. It also depends on things that humans don't consciously have control over. A study by Bezerra in 1997 concluded that there is a decreased blink rate in patients with Parkinson's disease um, because of the way Parkinson's affects the brain and affects blinking rate. But then I read a study from 2011 that argued that patients with conditions like schizophrenia and Parkinson's show increased blink rates. There's also a fascinating study that was done by Kowal, Casato and Hommel in 2011 and they looked at 25 adults regular cannabis users, and 25 non-users with similarities in gender, age, racial group, and IQ. Their results showed a significant decrease in spontaneous eye blink rate in chronic users of cannabis compared to non-users. So blink rate can give you an indication of a person's psychiatric well-being as well as their lifestyle choices. Another study argued that political candidates that had low blink rates were rated less favourably than those who were considered to have normal blink frequencies. But my response would be, what do you define as a normal blink rate? And how do you know that it's purely the blink rate, not their overall body language, their tone of voice, the way, what they were saying, or even, unfortunately, gender or racial background, which does play a part in whether people favour a candidate or not, unfortunately. There are perhaps three categories of eyelid movements which I think are helpful. Spontaneous, voluntary and reflex eyelid movements. Let's look at the practical purposes of blinking. Each blink provides your eye with moisture to protect the pupil and the iris and to promote clear vision. But there's some fascinating research done by Brzezinski, Lewis, Berebi, McNeely, Totsko and Puse, 2011, that mentions, as is the case with other facial movements, the human brain may register blink rate of a, of a person that they're engaging with for potential social relevance. And by social relevance, I don't think they mean whether you're popular or not. I think it's about sussing the person out. Are they a nervous type? Are they feeling relaxed around me? Is my loved one okay? Or are they feeling anxious or angry or that kind of thing? So, but we, I mean, we do have some broad and sometimes inaccurate rules when it comes to blink rate, right? So we have increased or rapid blink rates. Some people on the internet have said it's about, it's a mechanism to cope with stress or anxiety or that it happens when we're recalling information or somebody said it was arrogance and that when you increase your blink rate, you literally don't want to see the other person. So you increase your blink rate. Um, or it could be interpreted as a fluttering, which can serve as a romantic invitation. Um, but generally speaking, it's if a human is in a state of arousal. It could be any of the above, or it could be many others, but it's in, in a state of kind of, it could be anxiety, it could be information, it could be, it could be a romantic inv invitation, it could be lots of things. Reduced blink rate, on the other hand, um, some people I've read say it's about building rapport, that when you slow down the blink rate and only blink when the other person is pausing, and engage with the conversation, you're, you're basically saying non-verbally, I'm with you and I'm listening to you. And then there's also, of course, reduced blink rate asserts dominance or aggressiveness, um, which are all kind of broad linkages that people do generally give to blink rate. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think all of them are, are accurate. 
there seems to be external factors that affect our blink rate as well, which is why we can't just look at a person and, and say what they're feeling. A study by Hassan, Husamil and Khan, 2010, looked at the way illumination, noise and colour altered blink rates in certain groups. So it doesn't just alter, alter, doesn't just alter the pupils and the iris, but also the blink rate. Therefore, we can't just look at a person's blink rate and say, she's stressed, he's arrogant, he or she is flirting with me. I think that would be misusing nonverbal signs. But this video is going to focus on questions that Mr. Mark Carney took from the House of Commons Committee on February the 7th, 2013. I think soon after it was announced he would be the new governor. It's a long video, so I'm not going to show it in its entirety, but if you do want to see it, you can type in Mark Carney parliamentary questioning into YouTube and you'll find it. I'm focusing on the beginning of the hearing because that's where they ask more personal questions. Further on in the hearing, they look at financial specifics. I'm going to use this video to demonstrate how wonderfully varied the blink rate of one individual in one meeting can be, and how changing the blink rate can complement a person's words and the sentiment they're trying to put across, whether that be you're hoping to portray trust, acquiescence, or something more sinister like menacing or threatening sentiment. But I must say that Carney won't be showing us the latter. I also need to say I don't own this video about Carney. It was published by the YouTube user Mikan Goya. Um, this is a great video for our purposes because the questions directed at him, in my opinion, are very tough and would cause any rational human being to be anxious um, or stressed. But on the surface, in my opinion, Carney seemed to deal with it in a calm manner, taking into consideration they ask some really tough questions. But that's their job. Also, the angle of the camera is good enough to see Carney's blink rate. But again, camera angles can distort things a little. So I'd say it shows us what we perceive to be Carney's blink rate. First of all, I think we need to establish some sort of baseline for Carney's general blink rate. In this particular hearing anyway. And I think if you watch the video, you'll find that 608 is a good representation of what his baseline blink rate is in this hearing anyway. I can't really explain it with a beat or a timer, but this seems to be a kind of baseline rate for me from watching the video and a number of other videos and interviews of him. So here it is, 608. Uh, was that subsequent to that decision, um, the Chancellor um, suggested to me that uh, the position could be for a period of five years. Um, that was the first point. Uh, and secondly, I was informed that uh, Ch uh, Charlie Bean, Deputy Governor uh, for Monetary Policy, uh, had agreed uh, that he would extend his term for an additional year um, from the time of the uh, selection of the new governor. Uh, and so the... So I'm just going to leave that there, but keeping the baseline in mind, at 7.56 we have an example of Carney reacting in a bit more of a flustered manner. Closed about a month earlier. Uh, no, I was fully aware of that. Um, so I, how I, did you respond? I was... Uh, there were, I, it Didn't was, you say, well, hasn't the application deadline closed? Isn't that the first thing one might ask somebody approaching you to apply for a job? Yes. The, I needed to speak to the permanent secretary uh, based on the conversation that I had with uh, the... Okay, so starting from the beginning of that, since you've watched the whole thing. The, the application deadline had closed about a month earlier. Uh, no, I was fully aware of that. Um, so... I, no, I was fully aware of that. His eyes are wide, no blinking. He really wants to get across the message. And he wants to see that the person he's engaging with is getting that message. And when he says, um, he starts blinking again. And at this point, he's tried his very best, verbally and non-verbally, to get the message across. That he was aware that the deadline for the application had passed. Then mid-sentence, the gentleman asks Kani another question. How did you respond? I was... Uh... There were, I, Didn't you say, well, hasn't... 
Carney seems to be disrupted, startled, or flustered at that question. So how did he respond? That was the question he was asked. He stops blinking, again, completely, perhaps thinking after his train of thought has been disrupted. But then by 8.24, he's back on his baseline blink rate again. So we've seen examples of increases in blink rate, but a message can be really powerfully portrayed in a decrease in blink rate. 22.27 is an example of the power that decreasing blink rate can have. In this clip, he's talking quite firmly about his beliefs and values relating to the way he managed the Bank of Canada. This is my personal experience. Uh, I operate, the Bank of Canada operates absolutely on the basis of consensus. Now, I recognize, as does the financial stability. If you watch that clip, he has an authoritative tone, speaking of his belief regarding the Bank of Canada. His blink rate significantly decreases. The rates of his words slow down at the same time. Then when the moment passes, his words speed up in the sentence, and so does his blink rate. Similarly, if we shift our attention to the blink rate of the person asking Kanye the questions, if we go a little bit before 9.45, Watch the person who's asking Kanye the question, and watch his blink rate. There's the Sunday, yes. And did it occur to you that some of the other candidates, one of whom is still in the bank, might be a bit put out by the fact that uh, uh, a special arrangement had been put in place for you? Uh, I, I think it's... Uh... So... Uh... The person asking the question does not blink at all. He's squinting and has a, a knowing smile on his face, perhaps knowing that he's just asked quite an awkward question. He looks rather threatening by not blinking, um, a kind of interrogating demeanour because of that. And then that smile waters down any kind of truly sinister sentiment. I mean, uh, he is also just doing his job, and very well, I think. He's asking Carney some great questions. Subsequently, Carney's blink rate in reaction to his question is much quicker to his baseline. Now in this video, in this video, uh, put on YouTube by user Liar Politicians, don't worry about the name, it's just the clip that we're interested in, um, Carney gives us a great look at what could be a link between blink rate and building rapport, something that was mentioned earlier. Look out for when he says, I have my reputation to lose. He wants to put across the message that he is his own man and that he's sincere about that. He doesn't blink when he says that sentence. He doesn't want anything to interrupt that message to his interviewer because he wants that point to be clear. Here it is. Well, this is your sort of first in television interview since you were appointed. And of course, one question that abides is... One second, I'm just going to put the volume up. I'm not sure if you can really hear that. All right, here it comes. Are you your own man? After all, George Osborne scoured the world for you and even changed the employment parameters in order to make it attractive for you to come. Are you? Of course, absolutely. I mean, the uh, I, you, I've been an independent to... central bank. Well, there's two things. One is the 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 the, uh, the great advantage of the structure uh, that's been put in place for the Bank of England is the governor is absolutely independent. And in fact, uh, the other members of the Monetary Policy Committee, which set interest rates, and the Financial Policy Committee, which sets uh, financial policy, we're all independent. I have one term. I yeah. have one term. Uh, I've been appointed. Uh... So did you guess it? He really wants to be sincere on that point, and his blink rate just he stops blinking. Okay, I'm going to turn this down. Okay. So this is the last video. I don't own it. It was published by Channel 4 News, and it seems to demonstrate a link between blink rate and eye-blocking behaviour. Humans do engage in eye-blocking behaviour. I see it a lot, and I do it a lot. It can be done by briefly, briefly bringing the hand to the eye. To itch or rub it but you don't have to use another part of the body to block your vision you can simply close your eyelids 
when you're arguing that something is false or increasing blink rate so that in effect you block your own vision. Look out for when Carney says no to what his interviewer is saying. I'll let you know. Let's have a look from the beginning of the clip just to get the context. I'm going to turn this up again just in case. Does it, does it set the right tone to be saying to the Chinese, come in, do business here, set up banks, and actually the regulation you'll be subjected to will be actually lighter mm. than that which we've applied to banks which have already gone off the rails? Here comes. Uh, it, that would not be the right thing to say, but we certainly haven't said it. Uh, well, the the China, no, very, absolutely, very strong, no sure. absolutely not. What, what we have done is... So here Connie is saying no verbally, and he is saying no non-verbally to the complete decrease and shutdown of his blink rate, together with his head positioning, the slight shaking of his head, and a cluster of other non-verbal actions, his words and actions are reinforcing each other. And the subtle eye-blocking behaviour is part of that. And there you have it. So thank you for watching, and if you have anything to add, please let me know.